Hello everyone, this is Professor Nelson from Electronics. This time, we're going to improve and update this module for charging lithium batteries. You probably already have one of these to charge your rechargeable batteries. Like these ones here. However, this type of module is generally made to charge a single battery. These modules can only deliver one amp as a maximum current, meaning they only work for charging a single battery. If you want to charge two or more batteries in parallel like these ones here, you won't be able to do it with this type of module. Therefore, you'll have to buy another type of module or upgrade your module. Well, that's what we're going to do this time. Therefore, I invite you to stay until the end of the video to see how we improve this charging module. Okay. Now to improve our module, we'll need the following material. A 1 watt, 47 ohm resistor. A 1 kilom, quarter watt resistor. And a BJT transistor, a TIP3055, which will control the charging current. That would be all the material. Well, now we have to assemble it, and then we'll analyze how it works. Okay, now for a little theory. Here we have our unmodified charging module. And this would be its circuit. Let's analyze how it works a bit before looking at where the transistor and resistors would be connected in the module. We can see that we have three integrated circuits. Each integrated circuit performs a specific job. And we can see that here in the circuit. The TP4056 is the integrated circuit responsible for charging the battery. The battery is charged through pin 5 of the integrated circuit with positive signals. Since the negative terminal of the battery is connected directly to the negative terminal. However, at this moment, we have these two integrated circuits working together. The TP4056 is responsible for charging the battery with a specific current based on the value of this resistance. If the resistor value is higher, the charging current will be lower. And according to the data sheet, a 1.2 kilom resistor gives us a charging current of 0.9 to 1 ampere. However, if we lower the resistor value, we can charge with a much higher current. But the TP4056 has a limit of 1 amp, so lowering the resistance value is of no use. So we have a fixed limit for the TP4056. So this 1 kilom resistor we put in is useless. That's according to its data sheet. Then we have this set here, which is responsible for discharging the battery. This one is responsible for charging. And these two are responsible for discharging the battery. This is to prevent the battery from dropping below 2.4 volts, meaning the battery will never reach zero volts. And, incidentally, they control the discharge current through this integrated circuit which would be two transistors that would control the discharge current. So now we know how these two integrated circuits and this one work. Now let's see where the transistor and the 47 ohm resistor are connected.
Remember that this is responsible for charging the battery with positive signals, the current of which is controlled by this resistor on pin 2. And this assembly is responsible for discharging the battery through this transistor and through this integrated circuit. Our BJT transistor would be connected like this, where we have the base resistor toward positive or the charging signal. And the battery would be connected to the collector of the transistor. In this case, the battery would be charged with negative signals delivered by the transistor. And at the same time, it would be charged with positive signals delivered by the TP4056. Taking into account the quality of the transistor, which amplifies the signal that reaches the base to deliver it through the collector to the battery. In theory, it would be charging the battery with more current than this integrated circuit would actually deliver. However, you must keep in mind that the signal or current being used to charge the battery still comes from TP4056. Therefore, the current arriving here will never increase to a value greater than 1 amp. So, no matter how much I add a transistor, I won't be able to increase the battery's charging current. Even worse, part of that current will pass through the resistor to the emitter, losing part of the battery's charging current. Therefore, in theory, this circuit would not be charging the battery with a current greater than 1 amp, but the charging current would be even lower. Well, that would be the theory. However, let's see it in practice. Can this modification really charge a set of batteries in parallel with a current greater than 1 amp? Well, let's see that in practice. Okay, but before I forget, let's connect the positive and negative cables to our modified module. Okay, we're ready. Now we can connect the battery to our module. Okay. Now let's test our modified module to see if it can deliver more than one amp of charging current. To do that, let's test it with these three batteries connected in parallel. The connections would be as follows. Here we have the battery. We have the positive terminal of the battery that connects directly to the positive output. That is, the positive terminal will go directly to the positive terminal of the batteries. In the case of the negative terminal, it will be connected to the transistor collector. The negative terminal would go to the negative terminal that is connected to the transistor collector. Those would be the connections. Now we'll need to select direct current on our multimeter in the 20 amp range. And to power our module, we'll need a charger that delivers at least 2 amps. For now, I'm going to use this 67 watt charger. However, you can use a 10 watt charger or higher. So let's make the connections and test our module. Positive to positive. The positive cable of the multimeter to the negative pole of the batteries.
the negative with the negative. Okay, the connections are complete. Now let's power the module. Pay attention to the multimeter. There we can see the charging current of our batteries. It's charging at 0.76 amps, which is less than 1 amp. However, that charging current is normal or typical for charging a battery when the battery is completely discharged. But right now, I have three batteries that are completely discharged and connected in parallel. Therefore, the charging current should be greater than 0.7 amps. It should be at least 1.5 amps. That means the module isn't working properly. In other words, the modifications we made aren't working at all. I saw these types of modifications on the internet, so I wanted to test if they really worked, since it would be quite convenient to be able to update these types of modules and thus be able to charge multiple batteries in parallel. However, it turns out it doesn't work as it should. Therefore, I advise you not to build it, as it's not worth it. However, if you would like me to make an update that actually works, Write it in the comments so I can analyze it and make a video on the topic. Showing all the steps for the update. Okay, guys, that's all for today. Now, if you liked the video, don't forget that a like helps the channel a lot. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.